Greetings, Mr. Lee. It's nice to speak to you this evening. A pleasure. It's a pleasure. There I am. Well, I just wanted to have a sit down with you and get to know who Mr. Lee is, some of the things that you do in your professional life, a few things that you do in your personal life. You know, the fans, they, they want to know who you are. Can you recall when you started to become interested in playing sound, what were your greatest influences? All right, I'll tell you, when, when we first get interested in start playing sound, I was, a little, I was a little kid, I would say, too young to even play in a song, but I used to hear my uncle come in with all different kind of cassettes. You know, cassettes that I like to play spend time, man, like Stero One, Stero Mars, Silva, Kilimanjaro, songs like that. And I would start getting interested in the music, and I would like take away him cassette them sometimes, and go listen to them and try to put them back before he can come home, you know what I'm saying? Talk to us about becoming a member of Blunt Posse Sound. Where did it all begin? I remember I used to be up in the same club actually playing music, and I would see these guys come to me like, not not Ajax, but like Blunt and a few of his friends. They would come to me and like, who we'll sing that song? I'm playing, who we'll sing that song? We'll sing. I'm like, I used to wonder why these guys ask me this every week. But a long story short, then we realized that this big song named Blunt Barn, I'm like, oh, that's what they've been doing all this time, <laughs> doing their homework. Anyway, Ajax formed the song, become a member of the song. I remember one day Father Blunt linked me because, you know, we had them link up now and we are talking, we are friends. One day Father Blunt linked me and said, listen, man, we need somebody on the phone with Ear Jackson. I asked Ear Jackson if he would work with you because Ear Jackson knew me previously before the song and all that. I know Ear Jackson for years because Ear Jackson, Ear Jackson used to have a record shop and I used to buy records from him back in the days, you know what I mean? Yeah. So Ear Jackson told Father Blunt, said, yeah, man, bring in Mr. Lee, man. And from Blunt calling back and said, yeah, Ear Jackson will work with you, Mr. Lee. The rest was history. Just jump on a big song and say, watch, let's do what we got to do and take this thing around the world and take it around the globe. Okay, let's talk about what happens when you get a call that Blunt Posse is about to participate in a clash. When we get a call that Blunt Posse is going to be in a clash, the first thing we try to find out is who we are clashing against and where is this clash. Now, it depends on who we're clashing with is how we prepare our box. I'm not gonna get into detail of how we prepare our box because some boy in a bad like it and a tough like it and we not give them our ideas, you understand? I got you. <laughs> but, but what we do now, we just say, all right, and that's on the way I clash, clash games. We know that them not have this. Or even if them have this, they don't know if we play it. So we are gonna try to play it before them and show them what the greater song. You follow me? Absolutely, and then I we know. Just... Blunt Posse is, is such a heavy contender you know, right now. And, and I am, I imagine that, that it takes a lot knowing that when you're going in, you know that the other sound has studied you. You know that they right. are coming to, to just take this trophy to not even give you a chance. So I, I guess I'm asking, you know, do you prepare by who the crowd is or are you, do you prepare by who the sounds are that you're going against? You see, I real select. I real select, and I don't really need no bag of preparation, you know. Because no matter how much a guy study, you know, the talent, the talent no still ain't no buy. So I'm gonna buy up a whole heap of tune and all them things. And I feel like them gonna come a dance, come play out certain tune before us. And that's hurt themselves because when they might try to play out our round, you have to remember that people know say that's blown pass around, and they might not get the impact where we would have get. So them just waste around with them could have played them own way and get them forward. So when we come back in, okay, we always prepare for that, you know. I right. sit here and say some man I go practice and say watch all right, a blunt pass it. Cause we don't see it happen with others and be a You yeah. understand? So yeah. when some guy thinks he said them have study we we always one step ahead of them, you know? You all have traveled outside of the United States several times. What's been your most memorable experience traveling with Blunt Posse to uh, different countries? Well, my positive experience is when we kill people, you know. <laughs> when we kill people. That's simple, simple. And enough time we did that. So you just basically travel to kill people. That's what you're saying. I mean, give give me some no, no, other. No, 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 not really, no, not really. Cause we we have events where we go up and it's not a killing event. I want to show people say, watch, we are versatile like that. We are the best of both worlds. We can kill and we can juggle. Right. You know what I mean? Because I know that when you all uh, travel to, to uh, different countries in Europe, that you also are booked for some juggling dates. Tell, tell us about those and the crowd reaction. I'm sure that they sing along and everything. Wow, it's outstanding, man. It's different from, it's different from what I'm used to, like when I'm in New York, Jamaica, Florida, or even Canada. You know what I mean? I'm in front of, I'm, I'm in front of a crowd. When I'm in Europe, I'm in front of a crowd where if you see 
two people that look like Mr. Lee, you're lucky. But tell you what, I realize that the people that are in Europe, when it comes to Europe now, they appreciate and love the music more than even us over here on the East Coast. Yeah. You see what I mean? So yeah. I'm standing here, I'm playing the music like, wow, these people really know what's happening. They could sing line for line. You just have to just take time with them with your speech and don't get too deep into the path toward Yagua. You know what I mean? Right. And everything good. I bet their energy is just is just crazy. It's crazy, crazy mud, hype. It's different. It's a different feeling. It's a different feeling. A lot of songs on New York City are play right now. Make me, let me realize, say, watch your music. Not stop on New York. Music not stop on Jamaica. I realize That's the right. reggae music is bigger than enough. How we know it, you know. So we got the whole of Europe. Let's get just a tad bit serious, Mr. Lee. Yeah. Blunt Posse is a sound that gets a great deal of exposure, particularly when the subject of clash comes up. How do you handle being under the spotlight? I mean, under a microscope in the spotlight. How do you handle that? Well, I'm angry. I want to tell you right now, you know, I love it. You know? you know, some people get eye off of ganja. Some people get eye off of alcohol and drugs and all these things. The people that make me get eye. So once I walk out on the stage and make me, me see the people in front of me, I'm a I mean, musical, I'm ready. No shyness. Yeah, everybody gets a little, you get a little butterfly because you don't know what to expect. But once I get up on that stage or put on my first record, it's what I love. It's what I do. Well, th- those are the, the fans, those who love you. How do you handle the criticism? How do you handle those who say that, a uh, blunt posse is local. They're not a contender. They're not international. They're not going anywhere. They're not doing anything. Your every move is being watched, and they're just waiting for for blunt posse to fail. How do you handle that? Well, tell you what, most of them always say, if them even in this business, where them are go, where them there. Passport done. I'm go and I look for a new one right now. You know, you understand? Yeah. And next thing we may say, if people don't talk about you, you know, exist. So we love when them talk, we give them things to talk about, whether it's positive or negative. We love when them talk. You see what I mean? Yes. That means even when we are asleep, we need my car. We love it, man. We love it. <laughs> love it. We love when them talk, man. You don't have to keep them talking, man. Make them talk. You know, when them criticize me up on the internet, me not, me not reply to one of them. I love it. Keep keep on criticizing. And if I them a bad like me, if I them a bad like Ear Jacks, you know, some of them ear jacks surely is too big to sit down the wall upon them shoes. <laughs> well, I'm not just referring yeah, to the, the, the night of the clash and the blogs and the forums, but the, the, the chat. Uh, you talk about good talk, bad talk? Yes. Well, I mean, talk the good things, you know. We just take it and just love it and accept it and we don't get it. Because sometimes some of the people that we are talking good, I won't go and see you know, behind the back of different arguments, you know. And you have some of the people that we just talk but because they just don't like you and then I have no reason why they don't like you. Even when you do your best, even when you win a clash and you say you win the clash clear and clear and plain and still have some bad people say, oh, blunt win it because of this. we know all type of people, man. We're used to them, man. So we don't make that get to us, you know. We just keep it moving. We win as, we lose as some clash sometimes and we say, after we, we lose the clash, we say, I don't see how we lost that clash, but it's a part of the game. Right. Then you have to, and losers. Yeah, but you have to, and then you got the critics them coming out and say, Blunt sound weak, they're no good. 